Steven Spielberg said, The delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves. It may be common for many graduates to remain in the cities and not go back to the villages. It's not so for everyone. There are remnants who care to go back and hold the hand of others and try to show them a path to success. On 14th January 2023, Ion Passion visited Murera Ward, located in Kiambu County, Juja Sub County. We meet Moses, an assurance associate with PWC. Being brought up and having grown from this community, Murera Coffee, I've been able to identify a gap of the need for mentorship. Together with friends, they organized a career mentorship workshop targeting high school students and form for leavers. As they continue to make the, some of these critical decisions in their lives, we have decided to be involved and to be involved fully uh, to be able to guide them and to be able to offer that guidance. And showing them that they might be knowing some things, but they may not know everything. This was hosted at the Kenya Assemblies of God, Murera Coffee. They passionately desire to pass down the values to the next generation. In regards to their career, in regards to making life choices, in regards to leadership, because we want to raise a new breed of leaders, not just for our country, but even for the continent, Africa at large. Will the students come to the workshop? The venue is set and the program was to start by 8 a.m. But now it's 10 a.m. and very few have arrived. There is much planned for the day, and the hope is that the remaining time will be now for all to be covered. To bring young people together may not always be easy. Uh, we call them the Gen Zs. And uh, this generation is a generation that hates guidance, that hates instructions, that we feel like we, all, we know it all. You know, we are living in a digital age. And there is a danger of this age that we are living in. There is so much information and to decipher the information from the truth is something that is very difficult in our current time. We were eager to see the day unfold. Thankfully, with no time students started coming, one by one, together with friends, some brought by their parents, and the hall was full. All excited and looking forward to learning, networking with peers, and engaging with the mentors. My name is Sarah Nasiran. I'm Gloria Njogo, and today we are very happy to be here. We are going to, we are looking forward to learn more about um, career development, personal branding, and managing peer pressure. The comment that you can only cause some to an attack. So you don't know At least you are guided. I don't have a lot of work in life. And I want to learn more because I like knowing, knowing new things. Yeah. Mentors with different career backgrounds also arrived and were ready to pour out their lives to these dear ones. All of them having volunteered to come and spend the day with the students. My name is Felix Etienne. I am a lawyer by profession and I'm an advocate trainee. I'm happy to be here today, having this opportunity to mentor young students. I understand that this young generation needs a lot of mentorship that will enable them to pursue what they want in the future. They need somebody to hold their hands and show them the way forward. My name is Rufin Iwawino. I am a graduate from the Technical University of Kenya and I'm so glad to be here today as one of the mentors and uh, I just look forward to see how the, the high schoolers will open up on the various issues they are facing.
The singing of the national anthem marked the beginning of the workshop. Notebooks and pens at hand, ready to write the nuggets from those who have gone before them. Meet John Mwati, a consultant with Deloitte and the founder of Transcending Africa, an organization that seeks to raise value-based leaders in Africa. He moderates the first panel discussion, trying to answer the question of values among young people. Uh, is there a missing link uh, when you talk about values and bringing values into career, into education? And what is this missing link that we've been having, not just amongst ourselves as young people, but also at the country level? So, um, values. At the panel, we have Grace Kathure, an intern with Central Bank of Kenya. And Gotha Maina, a trained teacher. Christian values ought not only uh, to be spoken about, discussed about, but also exercised, even as we talk about our career, how to live out uh, your career. I believe that values are what a compass is to a pilot. I believe that the values are the compass that guide a person on the decisions that they, they take in life. Values guide a person on what they decide to do and what they fail to do. So I believe in a nutshell is a compass. It's a compass, yeah. Then is the other issue of mentorship. Is there a gap between mentorship and career? I would say yes, because um, some of you are really young, and uh, even me, I am a young person, and looking at my own journey, it is the mentors that have developed along the way that have helped me even with some of the issues around career. You might not uh, get up, you might not see your path fully when you're still young, but these mentors, uh, because they have gone ahead of you, can help you as you grapple with the issues of what do I do, what is my purpose, what am I good at? Where can I bring impact um, in, or in, in my country? As part of uh, what I do, um, I would say that on a day-to-day -day basis, I deal with young people. Uh, when we say that uh, many are ready to go any length to get what um, they, they, they want. Uh, but as I always say, or I would say, that a generation is only good as the quality of parenting or role models. Uh, why is it that the young person would feel that they want to get rich at any cost? It is because the example that has been set, um, either from um, a family level, political level, indicates that that is the only thing. Yeah, so there's a missing link and it is good that as young people we identify those missing links, especially on matters values, so that we can deal with that, we can get the necessary uh, values that are required, even as we think about um, developing our careers, growing our, our, our careers, identifying our career paths, and living up to actually the values that we ought to embrace. So we have come to a point as a country where what we glorify is wealth, uh, status, and so on. So we no longer look at the values, we no longer look at uh, people who add quality to the society. All we want to see is who is driving the biggest car, who is, uh, who, who, who is having a bigger name in the media. Now, once that is our compass, we lose it. And that is why our young people are walking in that direction. They want to be famous. We don't take into account what is the process of me getting to that end. And um, so I think for young people, it is very critical that we embrace 
and start loving the process towards getting something. And you have to start from somewhere and relish your process, you know? Process every stage. The small landmarks that you are making towards something are uh, embracing discipline and your values because they make the person that you are. As you would imagine it, the question on what success is would not miss, especially in the age where many will do anything, even compromise on their own values to achieve what they want. I want you to converse with your neighbor and let them tell you what they think success looks like. What does success look like? Is actually out of mentorship. 
the opportunities that I got. Firstly, from home. For me, I know the discipline that was inculcated at home when I was a still a small child. The knowledge that I developed of God and salvation that has in a good way impacted what I call a virtue and a vice. It has uh, informed my priorities, you know, my aspirations and uh, my mindset, my perspectives. I also take this thing seriously, um, enjoy the process, uh, allow people to nurture you right from home, from church, from your schools, the leaders that you will have, and those essential things they will build the path of that you are. And as you move along, pray that God reveals to you the picture of the person that you had in mind when he created you. Because the Bible says that every day or day for us was written in the book of God before any of them came to be. So God essentially knows everything about you. You are not about to surprise God with what you will become. So as early as now, start prayerfully considering what did God really create me for? As you embrace the process um, that God will take you through, mostly embracing discipline and obedience and also mentorship because there are people who have gone ahead of you, they have seen what you have not seen and God has let them go through that process for you because the Bible says uh, it has been entrusted unto us so that we entrust you to us. A round of applause to uh, our amazing panelists. panel discussion is moderated by Josiah Murioki, the founder of Betterment Africa. Joy is a student of civil engineering at the Galagala uh, Technical. Um, I'm an alumnus of the University of Nairobi. I took a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Chemistry. Kihara was our class rep. Uh, he used to call lecturers when we wanted to go and sleep <laughs> and, and organize the up classes. So I'm an incoming master at Foundation Scholar. I got a full scholarship to go to the University of Victoria. The University is the Bluari. The University is the Bluari. Together with fellow mentors, they enlightened the youth on important things they wish they knew while in high school. So praise God. My name is Alex Boledi, I'm a professional teacher. One thing is that I hope someone told me that success is majorly determined by the fulfillment you get in whatever you do. Thank you. My name is George Nara. Uh, I'm a graduate from the University of Nairobi. So previously I worked with Activan, but this year I'm joining the Trust Bank. Uh, actually, it's Kamande. Uh, simple. I think somebody should have just mentioned to me that life is not just about dreams. Awesome. My name is Grace Muta Jukuna. I'm currently in an audience pursuing food nutrition and athletics. And something I wish someone told me when I finished is that whichever grade that I get, as long as I did my best, that is the grade that God will use me to take me to the next level. That's from there. I am going to another level. It's not that Sime Maliza is a mission Asia. No, that Sime Maliza is a mission Thank you. Mimi Naitwa Joy. And I'm another student. I'm taking civil engineering at the Skalagala National Polytechnic. 
I am 13 years now, I'm back to school after 15 years of high school. So, nothing is never impossible. So, uh, I wish someone ever told me about uh, life has changes now, at least this is life young to begin. Eh? Just like I keep this born, see, I'm a tamba, I'm a zaliwa, I'm a tambe, I'm a tetembe, I'm a tembe, see me. Yeah, where's the expect to zaliwa and all that? Awesome. Right. Let's give all of them one. The conversation then shifted to the question of passion and career. Quite a contentious discussion. So we don't have a meter that measures passion. But all of us are passionate about something. And I will start with Grace. Uh, the question is, how do I identify my interest as a student and focus on it? Thank you so much for that. I'll start by uh, sharing maybe something. So uh, when I completed my form four, unlike other people, or unlike what I wanted to do in high school, I wanted to do medicine. I even wanted to uh, go and do an interfaculty after I was to do food nutrition and dietetics, so that I enroll for a, a clinical medicine or come as a better degree at clinical medicine in a diploma at all. But uh, some, uh, something really interesting is that I have always had a passion for cooking. I love cooking. And uh, I remember some words my dad told me when we were selecting the courses. I, I was choosing culinary arts. I wanted to pursue that. So uh, when my dad and the only other choice I can have, I told Nana, university kupika. Nana, you kupika. Now here, it can be tough from everything. Here in Kaona, like there is a line between good courses and courses which are not good, which shouldn't be the case. So, um, when you want to identify your interest and your passion, find something that you love doing. Nobody pushes you to do. What is that thing that you do? With ease. That thing that you do without being coerced, or that thing that you do just easily. Then, after that, you can realize what is that that you are so interested in. For instance, I love cooking. So, when I'm tired, I go and I try something new. I'm, I'm very innovative and creative. Does anybody who pick a pizza without using cheese, without using any, you know? And uh, uh, that's one way of knowing. Something you do, nobody forces you. Another thing is, people comment something about you on that regard. For example, someone can tell you, uh, John, you're really good at public speaking. Maybe that is your area. Or are you so good at storytelling? And from that, I came to, uh, to know and understand that I, so I can become a teacher. So also uh, ask people who are around you. Another thing is uh, you can do courses. Just uh, look, look for courses that uh, you can do on careers and you find an interest somewhere there. Another thing is something you're, you're really skilled at. So uh, when you invest where you're good at, you will eventually shine. So take your time and uh, yeah, that's what I can say. Uh, question is, what is the place for uh, dreams and aspirations as we pursue our career? Yeah, don't get that. Thank you, Jason. But you guys know who the president who said, I have a dream. And if you are learning, what up? Much better than that. I think I'll start by saying, it's okay to have dreams and it's okay to have aspirations. But if you're not going to wake up and work towards achieving your dreams, what happens? It's just going to be dreams. You guys know that. The first point is not the example. Your basic, what I do when you dream, you see it like in your mind, but basically it's not there like at that moment. I saw myself becoming a teacher when I was in form one. So therefore, first see something in your mind. Something that you walk with all through your life and then wake up and go after it. Thank you. 
Mimi nimewahi fanya kama house guard na maikuwa watch woman to be watchman. Nimefunza sana na nimekuwa bibi wa kuwa na mahali na nimefanya na mimi ya labor. So it doesn't matter and you see I the hapa kama house guard, kama ni kwa house guard, ni kwa watchman na all that video. Something in yes, you wait how we under Ubusiano. Sawa. Usiwe, we don't tell you the car, eh, Pane. Umam Juatina. Umam Sadimia. You never know where your bedroom may come from. Silio. Mimi, you're in Puja, the joint shoe, and you're in Puja, and you're like, actually, in a poor, in life, I have a connection. And connection, you were when I knew them and Zapo, you can, eh, Silio. You never know in any way, eh, still well. Yes? And also, kindly don't do small. God is there. Um, they have talked about dreams. That one of the dreams of young people, and as much as the family was talking about success, if someone sits there, and I know if the young people, since you wanted to go, you know, even when you were in campus, you were always, but then you got to be checked to, me and I think you were more, they know that you were more than you know. And you are dreaming and you just need a there, and you would find someone has left the whole day because it was a free day in campus. And Gio is not going to be a day more than our mom. You have to wake up and go and chase your dream. Uh, first to the next question, which I uh, will pose to Alex. Um, the question is what talent, skill, or knowledge would make me outstanding? So you can choose a talent, a skill, or a knowledge. Like something uh, you know. Thank you for that question. Basically, let me go, let me measure my answer on uh, the knowledge part and leave my, my colleagues will deal with the rest. Uh, according to what I have observed in the time that I've been on campus, I graduated in 2021. After that, I got some, an opportunity to, to work in a certain school and what made me to qualify for the interview and actually become one of the best candidates in that particular interview was my knowledge on ICT. I am, I, 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 after form 4, I went for some training to just get some clips on something to do with computer packages. And with that, actually, because afterwards I did an, uh, an examination that I passed, when I presented that certificate, actually, it made me qualify for that particular post. Even after having graduated just the other year. So, therefore, knowledge on ICT, actually, because of the way the, the world is changing, is very fundamental. Wake up and gain some skills about ICD. Uh, what, what I like to say is, first of all, a skill you need to have throughout life. Um, I, I love listening to uh, people's stories. And if I interact with a person, I love knowing like, who is the person behind this. If uh, this is uh, John, like what journey has he traveled to get to this point? Because you can't appreciate a person, you, truly you can't appreciate a person without knowing their story. So one, one thing is that reading, you will never outgrow reading. So have a reading culture. Read books, watch documentaries, always explore to learn. Another thing is to invest in yourself. That is, if you're getting some little money, uh, let's go back to our reading points. Buy books. So, um, invest in yourself. Uh, buy those things that you know that you last. Another thing is also invest in your health. Eat well. Uh, I am a nutritionist. So, uh, eat well. By eating well, as early as now, uh, you are able to Maybe that that person next to you may not help you, but maybe yeah, you know.
ule frequency kwa hiyo office unataka kuattend utaifika siku moja kama una appointment aku link na boss in the current one if you are not in work uh, then i don't know what you are doing because it's through the networks that we that we make that we are able even to do this it's through networking that i got to know josaya we in the same class but we can tell you out of the same network uh guys that we in that class it is not all of us who we are talking about we are getting to share opportunities with each other it's through a network and sometimes before before it used to be who do you know but i think I'm trying to change that narrative and ask people who are the people that know you. Make it. Because you can be knowing people, I can be knowing all these people in this room, but do they know me? Because it's those people that who know you who are going to connect you to the opportunities. Because they know the talents and the skills that uh, Josiah is asking about, they're the ones that who know those things about you. You guys, after this, make sure you get contacts, make sure you follow up. Uh, at least we have our social media. Connect with these people, get to know whatever they are doing. And even as you get to do those careers, whatever you are going to do in campuses, at least you have people who are working with you. And that's how the mentorship happens. Because you don't want to just be mentored by just anybody. Uh, I won't just bring somebody from the market and come to tell you all you guys you want to be helped by somebody who has already walked through that path and somebody who knows what they are doing. So yes, I think what I would like to say is before you start networking, do you yourself believe in yourself? Are you fit enough to do that thing you are going through? And what's your relationship with people? Studying abroad is something many students desire. And having Kelvin Mongai, a freshman student in New York University was a great encouragement. One of Kihara's mentees. Please get me. Ah, Peter, get me. So he has, he has some experience uh, being abroad and he's in his first year. Can you talk to us? Tell us what's your experience now and your perspective as well. Because I know the place is you guys watch World Cup. See you out. If you are working, don't listen again. I'm going to be a young man. If you are working, thank you. Uh, can you even tell us? This is a Muslim land. Mm -hmm. So, my school has three campuses in the world. I chose to go to the one that is in the United Arab Emirates. We call it for Arab mainly, so it's a Muslim country. So, you start learning that the world is not as big or as small as you think. It's how much you put into it. Your effort. If you go to campus, even here in Kenya, you'll meet so many people from different parts of this country. See people from very rich and very uh, humble backgrounds. But then how you interact with them is what will define your personal experience. So for me, I understood that I am a student and I went to a school that is very competitive. But then once you realize that you are in the middle of people who want to learn about your culture, who want to learn about you, then you can be anything or anyone you want to become. I applied to do law uh, at the University of Nairobi. Namiwoko last month said the University of Nairobi. And I was called to do law. And my dream was set. I wanted to be a lawyer. We got up for PLO Lumumba, Palet, to find a number of petition, 2027. But then the problem came in when I could not afford to join campus. What do I do next? I started to think about Tibet. But before that, I knew I had an opportunity. I was being, I was a mentee uh, and uh, an equity program. And um, I started by saying, take every opportunity as if it's not given, right? Because it is. So I put in everything that I had, my heart, my soul, I dedicated every waking moment to 
chasing my dream of studying abroad. I can tell you, it took me around 10 months before I got my first letter that said congratulations. Every other letter that ever came before that was unfortunately we, we are unable. Uh, and then I got my letter to go abroad in January, uh, in February, mid-February. So last year, at a time like this, I still was not, I was not in school. I was waiting to get confirmed by that organization. They still had a few things to confirm. So my bottom line is that wherever you're chasing your dreams, right now I'm chasing my dreams abroad. But then that did not define me before I got that chance. See you. Remember, I was a mentee, right? I told you last year I was a mentee under Josiah, and today I'm a mentor. So, and don't forget to have a mentor. Have someone who's inspired. Okay? We have plans, right? Hey, funny, funny. We have plans, right? Have they been helpful to you? Yes. As better than Africa, we believe in one thing. In passing the baton. First, tell the reason passing the baton. Passing the baton. But if you don't give up on your dreams, and you know yourself, and you apply all the things you have said here, you will make it. Tell your neighbor, you will make it. Remind them to pass the baton. Remind them, remind them, tell them, pass the baton. Yes. So, don't stay with the information you have. Let's spread this like bushfire, right? So thank you so much. Uh, Joy wants to make us appreciate the team. So we, we appreciate the team. Thank you so much. Back to the MV. God bless you. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The students were challenged to dream and look out for opportunities available for them to grow. Mary Modoni, the founder of Baringo County Mentors, emphasized on this point. Why am I saying all these things I've done? I've done? I'm saying them just to encourage you, our younger brothers and sisters. There are so many opportunities that are available for you online, but they will not bring themselves to you. Has it a letter? You will have to pursue them. For some, you will get rejection. For some, it will uh, be uh, breakthrough. It depends on you know your journey, and everyone's journey is different. And where I work, I work a lot with the young people. But the problem is that you find value addition. There is nothing extra that you have. Wakati unakuja kwa interview ya kazi, unapata all of you are the same. But then when you are the same, hauna ile the, the employer needs. I have seven lessons from my own life, and number one is no God. No God serving and walk this journey with God. Without Him, it's very easy to perish. And for the young generation, you see people who are not walking with God become tough. Number two, believe in yourself. Go for it. The dreams in the report on the same one pursue it. Do that application. What I did you, but you've taken the step. Uh, and then never despise humble beginnings. Even if, for example, your results will come, how to go about a great attack, just start from somewhere. Don't despise that humble beginning. Friendships are very important to your circle of influence. Jacob said that. Patience. When you attack a microwave result, you may apply sizing issue and eat at the end of South Africa. There's a process. And then continuous growth, uh, continuous improvement is very important. If you're not improving every day by reading, talking to people, it means you're not growing. So continuously grow by investing in reading and talking to people. And lastly, everyone's journey is different. I've walked a different journey, Jacob was different. So never compare yourself. Never try to copy Yaule Mungine. And finally, Jeremiah 29 11. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future and I hope not to destroy you. Karim Moses.
At a time when many things seek to define the life of a young person, how are the youth supposed to guard their identity? Jacob Kome answered this question, pointing the youth to God. I did. Because when you know who you are, you will not escape the adolescent stage. You will not escape the teenage stage. You go through age, but as long as you know who you are, you can make the choice. I want to be with this group A, the group that knows today I am a young man. But whatever I do here at the age of 14, at the age of 16, at the age of 12, or maybe at the age of wherever you are right now, in the next Gentlemen, I have come to tell you one day, before we even try to show you your purpose, before we even try to invite you to be in the right stage and in the right group, you need to know yourself. Know yourself. Who are you? Even if I'm speaking, I'm speaking, ask yourself, who are you? Who am I? Who am I? You can get your identity in God. Who made you to be who you are today? And this is God. Whether you are a father, a mother, or not, He is the father to the fathers. I just love God. And so, my brothers and my sisters, the only way you can overcome peer pressure, I know it is there. Even right now, it is there. You want to look like the echo, you want to look like Wajiko, you want to look like the show you like Akina, Diana, Akina, Beyonce. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to introduce you to one mentor, lifetime mentor, God. God. Wherever you go, God. You will not know what to do in the, in the university, ask God. In the beginning, God. To show how impactful this workshop was, it attracted the attention of the member of county assembly, Honorable Moses Ngatha, who came to encourage and inspire the students. Uh, many, many speakers have spoken, and me, I'm going to concentrate on one on one item about the self spirit. Apart from everything, you can be educated, educated, you can have everything, but when you don't have self spirit, you are God. Praise God. And there are some of the few buildings that you have to look for. One, you must be committed to what you are doing. As I am, you are going to be so temptation. There's temptation for alcohol, addict, peer pressure, as the speaker was talking about. For as a Christian leader, you must be avoid the temptation. Uh, you have to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, who is going to take care for you? It's good for you as a, as a self-esteem person to set your clear direction of your goal. Your goal must be set clear. Finally, there is a price and you have to set your goal and your eye on the price. Then the price that you're going to get one day, one time, you be somebody who will be, who somebody who will be respected in the community, somebody who will be productive in the community, somebody who will stand and say that God has been with me. Set your girl that you have to focus on your goal. And when you focus on your goal, God is going to be with you. Praise God. Amen. One as a And without few remarks, I want to say that for 
lunchtime sessions provided the opportunity to continue with the mentorship discussions. Some of the mentors had this to say. Today, I feel it is a very, a very impressive initiative. Why? The place of mentorship cannot be neglected in a generation, rather in a school setup or rather in a society setup. So this initiative, I find it very impressive. For instance, I've learned really a lot from the, from the session that have just occurred this morning. I've learned much that which I could have known while still back in high school. I would, have, I would have chosen the best of the thing that I want for myself. So this initiative should continue and rather it's a step and I encourage the organizers to continue doing this severally so that we can save our generation. Because I am passionate about mentorship, I am an author of a book on mentorship and I am so delighted because of the turn up of the young people. It's a very crucial stage in their life and I think it's a good thing when leaders and also those who have gone before them are coming in a time as this, as this to speak to them and also to challenge them, to inspire them and also instill value-based leadership because I think that is what we need in a time and a season as this as a nation. One key aspect for this mentorship workshop was to have the mentors interact with the students. After lunch, all the mentors present were divided into different small groups of students where they answered different questions from the students. Students at this stage are faced with many different challenges and you could tell from their faces that they had found a safe place to express themselves. Questions raised ranged from how to deal with challenges in high school, knowing which career path to choose, dealing with past failures, relationships, dealing with family brokenness, and opportunities to leverage. Sharing their life stories, experiences, and lessons, the mentors did their best to guide them, and the students were definitely encouraged, challenged, and inspired to pursue their dreams. As the day was slowly closing down, we had Nalianya Simiu, the director of Simedia, talk to us about personal branding. He highlighted the profound reminder that the internet never forgets, and therefore, the need for great care in our online engagements. You see, so there's nothing like fun on social media. There's nothing like fun. Because Facebook doesn't forget. Also, even on Instagram, never make a post out of fun. But today, decide how you brand yourself. Because let, let me tell you the truth. If you refuse to brand yourself, the world will just worry about you and it will be missing. So identify your area of passion. Something that you can do when no one is pushing you. Number two, number two, your area of strength. Number two is what are you passionate about? Uh, then, number three, what are your unique skills? What is your unique field and what are your talents? Can you paint like the pictures that I have used? Can you paint? Brand yourself outside there. It is never too late. As long as you have a smartphone, and you have internet connection. I want us to go with a call. Nikki, when you see a brand, uh, you mention the name, Sao Sao. That one? The reason why you are able to identify all this brand, it's because they decided this is how you are going to tell our stories. So when I see the in your class, that's how branding starts by the way. You just go up in front of your class and people say, we will be faster. Is that true? That's why we go faster today because they are going to see you and pray. See you. So be very careful how you sell yourself outside there. There's something that we call consistency. Myself, people visit my status to view about devotion, to view about tech updates, and to view about social media. What about you? Have you defined yourself 
But we are that kind of a person that people always know on their status. What can you have that status on the journey by? Bono post new as post giving in a group about you. As a student, consume good information, but do not garbage in, garbage out. We have a lot of online accounts, including LinkedIn, that teaches students, high school students, how to improve their grades. Then it's important to start building your personal brand now. Because if you don't saturate information on the internet about yourself, one day somebody will blog about yourself and you'll never like it. Yeah, so the way that you have branded yourself is... Tunelekea tomati. Tunelekea tomati. What have you learned? Finally, the keynote speaker, Mr. Okanda Yuji. The CEO and founder of Unlock Young Leaders Summit, a youth-based leadership organization that seeks to spearhead leadership development, moral and ethical transformation, and promote quality, holistic growth among the young leaders. And the impact of values in your leadership as an individual. Young people who you are listening to me right now, you can never grow beyond your, your values. In fact, you can guess where you are going if you do the calculation of about five people that you surround yourself with. There's a Chinese proverb that says, if you, if you hang around the barber shop for too long, you're going to have a cut. And it is important to understand, as young as we are, we get what we deserve based on what we are doing at this time of our lives. Life is made up of seasons. There was a season where you were born and you could not sustain yourself. You had to be carried around by your mama. She had to, to breast to feed you so that you can have something in your stomach. And then it gets to a season whereby you need to make decisions. You need to be in school and in private school they used to give you questions and you need to pick either A, B, C, D and that was a season. Now you go to high school and now you need to think. You need to write down your answer. That's a season. But alongside this season, there are moments that we need to treasure. Moments where we make friends. Moments where we, we get into leadership positions. Moments whereby God gives us an opportunity to meet people like we have met them today. And therefore we have to capitalize on such moments to make sure that you leverage to sustain your future and to take it where it's supposed to, to go. Now, within the, ex within the seasons and the moments, we have what we call experiences. Sharing his life journey, he drew many lessons to inspire the students. And I remember when I was a little boy, I could experience family best violence. And my stepfather, whom I came to knew later on, who was my stepfather, used to beat up my mom and used to beat us. Sometimes we would be chased out and sleep outside. And I didn't know what to do with that situation. I didn't know, I did not know how to do to deal with that season of life that I was in. But to cut the long story short, I started on my second place. 2011. And I got 24 marks. I remember I, I used to sleep in a dusty kitchen. I went that evening and I asked God for grace to stay. Let me tell you that some of the things you're struggling about, it's only that you've never taken a commitment to talk to me, to talk to me. Talk about it to God. Because if you waste time doing unnecessary things, you will build a necessary lifestyle. You will build a life like that you, you, you are not even, you, you don't even convert it. You guys can buy a book. I've, I've shared uh, a whole bunch of my life story in this book. This book is partly an autobiography of my life story and life, life lessons that I've actually shared here. It's 216 pages and it goes to a thousand more. One of the things that have defined my life, and I've always prayed that that will be a consistent life, is having a sense of values. When you, when you miss on values, you miss on life. Values, how many of us have visited a, a construction site? 
When you visit a construction site, one of the first things they do, they fence that area. They fence that area so that you don't see what is happening. And then after a few number of days, you start seeing a building coming up. Now, values are like scaffolds around your life. When you don't have scaffolds around your life, there is nothing you're building. Like, values are the things that define your moral code of conduct. Values are your work ethics. They define your study ethics. Now, number one, all the excuses you have in life, they are valid. But the question is, are those excuses going to feed your destiny? Number two, everything you have gone through in life was necessary to get you to where you are today. It might be where you have been born, it might be the situation you are in. But let me tell you, dear ones, as young as you are, as a teenager as you are, everything you have gone through in life was necessary to carry you to where you are today. So that it cuts your pride, so that it deals with your attitude, so that you know how to handle people, so that you know how to manage resources. Because discipline is not acquired, the discipline is built. And leaders don't need motivation, leaders need discipline. Number three, for those who are writing, you are as strong or as weak as the decisions you make. You, in fact, you are more looking either like your mother or your, mother, your father or the combination of the two, maternity and paternity, but you live and die looking like the decisions you make on a daily basis. You will be, we, we buy decisions. We don't buy human beings. When the casket is going down, we are buying a life that has been lived. You have people around your life who can call you out when you are making poor decisions. Now the question is, do you know where you're going? Because your values will always look at where you're going. And therefore, as I finish, one of my questions to all of us is this. What are the values that you hold in here? No one in this room is too young to live a purpose-driven life. Therefore, I'm calling upon all of us today to make a decision. And how does your life look like? What are some of the things you need to leave? What are some of the burdens you need to leave behind? Let's pray. As long as I pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to engage and have this conversation. I, I thank you because of this dear ones and thank you for giving them an opportunity to hear us. I thank you that Lord you have given given them this opportunity. I made this card to be for success. And Lord we are grateful for us that you made available to come more than just one for one. And the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Greet at least a few guys in the talk the program was over and everyone was excited having networked and learned. My name is Dr. Stutoek. I was one of the mentors for the today's session and I must say it has really been a lovely day. I've learned a lot even as a mentor about uh, our mentees and I would say it's been really a fulfilling experience because you're getting to give back uh, your information and, and what you know and the experience you've had in your in your life journey back to the younger generation something so great and something so fulfilling I've formed networks from this uh, platform and uh, really great I would really want to do this again and mentor the children just to give them guidance on what they're supposed to do even as they leave school so that they can follow the right paths. My name is Melissa Juvinaris. I'm, I'm in Form 4. I'm from Karema Girls and I've been part of this mentorship today. It has been a wonderful experience to come and interact with the other teenagers. I've learned a lot about value and leadership skills. Just And because I'm a leader in school and I aspire more to be who I am, 
I've learned more on careers and, and development and also I've learned more on how to interact with others and share my skills. It's not all about the grade I've got, uh, that I will get and it's not all about the knowledge I have in books. My skills and my talents can also help me. So I look forward to the next career development program. It will may it be a success and may people turn out in large numbers, the teenagers, because it's an educational program and it helps in every in, in, in a diverse way of life. The turnout had exceeded their expectations for it brought together over 150 mentees and over 40 mentors. This takes the message out there that there are many young people who desire someone to hold their hand. Would you be the one? Much appreciation to all the mentors who sacrificed their time to be here with the students. It was indeed a successful and an amazing day. Moses had this to say. I do take this opportunity to thank God uh, for such a wonderful and a very successful career workshop. This gives us a fulfillment as a planning committee just to see the day coming to an end and we are grateful to have seen what uh, the kind of facilitators that we had and the kind of impact that even we can start seeing it among the mentees even as we come to the closure of this workshop. So thank you all for your support and we look forward to have more of this and much more to inspire more communities to be able to think of such and being able to impact the young ones that they have uh, in their society. So may the Lord bless you. Uh, shalom.